Hello, this is Brian Knudsen, and this demo is for my VMware View 5 course from TrainSignal. Now it's time for me to show you the most flexible way of deploying ThinApp packages using a user login script. I'm going to start here on our ThinApp packaging machine. It's been reverted back to the clean desktop image. Our packages directory out on the network is going to be the central location for users to go for accessing their ThinApp applications. Out here I've already copied the ThinReg utility and created a ThinApp registration batch file. This is where we're going to script out the registration of a ThinApp package. The script doesn't have to be a batch file, but could be a VB script or any other script that's supported for a user login script. We start the registration of each ThinApp application by referencing the ThinReg utility. This is the executable that we want the batch file to run. Next we need to reference the actual ThinApp package, which in our case is going to be this Opera executable here. And since our path contains spaces, we're going to need to enclose this in quotes. And to do a basic registration of a ThinApp package, that's all you need. This exact same command could be run directly from a command prompt if you wanted to. But in this case, we'll go ahead and save this file and test it. And we've run into an error here. This error is the unable to register the ThinApp package. This is because the ThinDirect plugin can't be installed on a per user basis. It must be installed for all users. This is pretty easy to do, but first we need to clean up this failed installation. To unregister an application, we simply need to enter a slash u flag. Save the file, and rerun the batch file. And now our Opera registration is gone. To switch it over to all users, we come in here and edit, and we'll change the slash u to a slash a, indicating an all user registration. We'll save that, and rerun our batch file. Now we've had no errors, and we can see the operas on the desktop in our start menu shortcuts and in our all programs directory. If we come into our control panel and look in add remove programs, you'll see that Opera 11, a thin app version of it specifically, has been installed on this machine. While there's been no physical installation of Opera, ThinReg does put an entry in here for the purposes of tracking what software has been registered on the machine. Let's take a look at the shortcut that Opera placed on the desktop. Looking at the target, we can see it's pointing to our network location. So we know when we double click this, it's going to execute something off the network. So let's give that a try. First of all, you can see that there's a little screen that pops up, letting us know that Opera is launching. And now we have our Opera browser, which has never been installed on this Windows machine, but yet we have full ability to utilize it. Now that we've run this application once, let's go out to the network location where we defined our sandbox to be and take a look at the structure of the sandbox itself. Out on our ThinApp share on our NAS server, 
we have a sandboxes directory. In that sandboxes directory, we have one folder so far. That's for the administrator account that I'm currently logged in as. Inside here, you can see there's an Opera Lovin folder. The name of this folder is defined by the inventory name. In here, you can see several files that represent the virtual registry. You can also see the app data and local app data directories that represent the virtual file system. That's the sandbox location that this administrator will always access whenever running this Opera 11 ThinApp package. Now obviously we won't want our users to double click the ThinApp registration batch file every time that they want their applications. We want their applications to look like they're already installed, which means we need to have these registered during the login process. That's where the login script comes in. So I switched over to the domain controller, where we manage our GPOs. Here you can see, on my user accounts OU, I've created a GPO called ThinApp Deployment, which I'll use to define what applications I want to deploy to my users. You can see in the settings that nothing's been set yet, so let's go in and edit this GPO. Login scripts are a user configuration, so we'll go under User Configuration, under Policies, Windows Settings, and under Scripts. Now we can double click on Logon. Here's where we can define what scripts will be run during the login process for any users that are inside the scope of this GPO. Here we can click Add and provide the full path to our batch file. Once we have that entered, we can simply click OK. And now that batch file will be run every time a user logs in. Now I've switched over to my client device, where we're going to launch the view client. We'll connect to our ViewCon01 server. And log in as Louisa, who's in the user accounts OU. Louisa is a member of the call center, which you may recall is a linked clone floating pool that's refreshed every time the user logs off. So any changes the user makes will be wiped out unless they're saved on the network. And in the case of the software package that we're testing, the changes she makes will be saved in her sandbox, which is being redirected out to the network. So let's connect. And now you'll see that Opera is in our shortcut menu, on our All Programs menu, and also on the desktop. Launching it, you can see it as a thin app package. And now we have Opera on a machine that has never had Opera installed on it before. Let's do a quick test of our thin direct functionality. Remember that we had defined that trainsignal.com would redirect to the ThinApp package. And like magic, trainsignal.com has loaded in Opera, even though we typed it into Internet Explorer. So that's how you can deploy your ThinApp packages through traditional login scripts. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.